That's me, Joe Quesada. My dad bought me my first comic book when I was eight years old. You can say I got the bug. You can also say comics taught me how to tell a story. Since then, I've learned that you can find stories anywhere and everywhere. The best stories teach us, guide us, and encourage us to be better versions of ourselves. In short, stories give order to the chaos of the universe. Marvel Comics has been telling an entire universe of stories for over 80 years. Working at Marvel, you feel the weight of carrying on that legacy. It's a lot of pressure, and I should know because I've worked at Marvel for over two decades. I even sat in Stan Lee's chair as editor-in-chief. At Marvel, our mission is telling great stories, and my job is helping us tell the best stories we possibly can. I get to chat with some of my favorite storytellers from all walks of life and get their take on what it takes to craft a good story. And one thing every great story needs is a great character. So today, we're talking about one of the greatest. He's gone by many names over the years. Weapon X, Patch, the old Knucklehead, and of course, Logan. Yep, I'm talking about one of the most revered characters in all of comics, Wolverine. Since his first appearance 45 years ago, Wolverine has been an invaluable and beloved member of the entire Marvel Universe. With the lethal senses of an apex predator, razor sharp claws, and a superhuman healing factor, it's no wonder Wolverine likes to say, I'm the best there is at what I do. Well, today's guest is the best at what he does too. I want to tell the story of the human side of all these superheroes. The only way to really tell these stories. Right. I'm Joe Quesada. I tell stories for a living. Welcome to Marvel Storyboards. Today's guest needs no introduction. How are you? Okay, maybe we'll give him a little introduction. It's great to see you. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, but that's not all he is. Hugh's also a producer, an actor, a singer, a philanthropist, and an Emmy and Tony award-winning song and dance man. He's also a buddy of mine, so we're catching up while he's in town. We should preface this. I, I've done some artwork for you in the past, and yeah. stuff like that, and, and we, we first met over the phone. Yeah. You cold called me. I did cold call you. And I was like, hello, this is Hugh Jackman. And I yeah. immediately think, I have a friend who's a huge prankster. Uh, <laughs> and the last time something like that happened to me, yeah. it's gonna sound braggadocious, but I'd gotten a call from the White House and Obama had wanted me to do a piece of artwork for him. Right. And I said, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. When I was getting ready to go on the press tour for Logan, realizing it was 17 years into that journey and what struck me was how many people had helped along the way. And so I had this idea of creating like a, a cell, a, a drawing. Yeah. And you're the name that everyone oh. comes up with. It's a definitive. I was like, okay, I really want something special. <laughs> so I don't know if you know this, but I've given them out to people from publicity teams I've worked with for years. And currently I think three quarters of them are on the market for sale. So are you I, serious? No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I want to know about your origin story. My first job, yeah, 7-Eleven. I used to have to go in and stack the milk and there was a crate in there with all the damaged goods. So if you get a damaged dairy whip or something like that, you just put it in a thing and you get a full credit for it. So I know it's going back and I go in there and I'm stacking, love whipped cream. So I'm literally doing one of these. Right. I used to about every hour go in it. Right. And during one of those, the boss walks in like that. I'm like, and she opens up the door and she'd already been annoyed. She said she talked to the customers too much. Just get them out. This is 7-Eleven, all right? No one really needs a customer experience. So I'm like, she goes, just go. So I got fired from that one. Did you imagine or fantasize that this is where you would end up? I never thought it was really going to happen. It was sort of very, very bizarre. Yeah. I don't remember thinking, I'm gonna be an actor, I'm gonna do this, in fact, the opposite. I think I was more scared to own up to that. I went to one of those fancy schools where the arts were a really important part of the rounding of a young man, yeah. but you go and be a lawyer. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. get a real job actually. Yeah, yeah, but you get a real job. And I went on a gap year, and if I hadn't been on a gap year, I would have probably either been now an yeah. accountant or a lawyer, but 
the form of acting didn't really happen until I was 22 or 23. Mm -hmm. I auditioned for an acting school. I did not get in, so I was 22. Wow. They rang me up and said, someone's dropped out and we're going to audition five people off the bench, basically. We're going to choose one of the five. Mm. So I went along and I got the spot. So I got this letter and I was like, yes, I'm in. This is great. I really want to do this. I'm not telling anybody else, mm. right? Because I'm in Australia, it's like, really? You? You're an actor? I mean, my, my, my cowboy boots are more of an actor. That, that's the yeah. kind of... So I just sort of kept it quiet. And at the very end, it said, uh, please bring a check for $3,500 on day one. <laughs> and everyone in America will think that's really cheap. But in Australia, when I was growing up, right. college was free. Mm -hmm. And I just never thought that this was going to cost anything. Right. Stupid. Yeah. I screwed up and put it in the bin because I was like, I've just finished college. I'm not going to ask my dad for three right. and a half grand. I don't have three and a half grand. I was working at the Shell gas station for 10 bucks an hour. So I was like, all right, that's, that's not happening. And the next day I got a letter, which was from my grandmother's will. Mm -hmm. And inside the letter was a check for three and a half thousand dollars. Wow. I said, what? <laughs> and I went straight to the trash can <laughs> and there it was. And I unrolled it and I'm like, I'm going. I think that kind of story feels very like, Okay, you can't make this one up. But tell me about when you get that first call to play this character, Wolverine. I mean, do you know who he is? Do you know anything about the character? Oh, I knew nothing. I didn't even know a Wolverine was a real thing. And I remember going to an IMAX, watching a documentary on wolves, thinking Wolverine was like a wolf, part wolf. <laughs> Some of the stuff that I kept, actually, wolves are driven by their sense of smell, which is why they're always looking down, why you see all these pictures of them, and they're always looking at your camera now. But right. So I used to think, oh, like a wolf, I always need to be seeing my eyebrow. The director said, you're doing something with your body. What's that? And I said, oh, yeah, it's cool. I've been looking at wolves. And he goes, why? I said, well, you know, Wolverine. It's like there's a, something in the mythology. Yeah. And he goes, no, yeah. it's a Wolverine. I said, well, <laughs> there's no such thing. And he goes, yeah, like go to the zoo. Like that's how little I knew. <laughs> I'm at the National Theatre at the time and my wife is reading the scene with me. Right. And I remember her saying, Wolverine senses danger, his nostrils flare, uh, and snicked. She goes, what? And she goes, S-N-I-K-T, <laughs> snicked. Claws come out of his hands and she looks at, she goes, but you can't be doing this. What, what, you got claws coming out of your hand? Like, all I have is three pages. I don't have the script. I'm like... Look, it's Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart and Anna Paquin. I'm going to go for it anyway. She goes, well, you're on your own, babe. So when I went for the audition, it's the only time ever my wife has been wrong, by the way, in 25 okay, years right. of marriage. <laughs> so now here you are. You, you've got this part as Wolverine. And, and clearly as, as an actor, I, I, I'm sure you're pulling from a number of different sources. But what do you pull from yourself? What part of yourself do you feel is, is in Logan? And clearly you are not Logan, right? It is in me, actually. Uh, on the surface, you don't see that at all. But if I look back at who I am and every time my back's against the wall, I get filled with rage. So when I'm younger, it was a blind rage. I would have a trigger. Really? In that way, there is part of me, I know that can lose it. I, kn I know that, I can feel it. I am not the brooding, dark, get out of my face, I'll do anything I want. I, part of me wants to be that. I'm a complete people pleaser compared to Wolverine. Right. But on some deep level, I get it. Mm -hmm. Probably wish I was a little more like that. Yeah. And that's a good combination to have. I also always approach Wolverine knowing that I could never know everything about the character that, that, that you know. Mm -hmm. I approached him with the seriousness and the intellectual curiosity as if I was playing Richard III, right. as if I was playing Macbeth, mm -hmm. Hamlet. I always thought it was very sort of Greek tragedy, like classical theater. Mm -hmm. So he represents in all of us, this fight between chaos and control. Yeah. The animal and the human. So quip, line, all a cover for what is happening underneath. And it's a great archetype, yeah. the reluctant hero. The bad boy with the heart though, right? Totally. So you played this character for a really long time mm. and you walked away sort of on your own terms. You said, enough, time to hang up the claws. I had this feeling underneath that 
I hadn't achieved all I wanted to do with the character, that I hadn't done the character justice. I felt there was just more gravitas, more complexity. And so I thought, this is it. Mm. I, I need to put all in. I need to take out the safety net of, I'll have another go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that out. I'm just going to go for it. I told everybody this is the last one. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what the story would be. I'm more interested in what it's like after the fight right. and him finding it almost impossible to live with himself. Part of Wolverine's heroism is not just the things he does, right, to save the day, but being able to keep the animal inside. It's that constant struggle of keeping sort of nature out. We all face it. We don't live on that edge. Yeah. That was what always really drew me to that character and also just the, the lack of memory. That was huge. Mm -hmm. the not, just that feeling that you've done something that you may never get over. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure what it is, yeah. but I just have this feeling that I'm a bad egg. I'm actually not a redeemable character. I always really keyed into that. That's a very interesting take. I've never quite heard that. That's great. I'm sure you're aware there's this viral video of you going around doing uh, doing ADR for Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Could you show me how to grunt and yell like Wolverine, <laughs> like properly? You up for it? Yeah. So before. I do any Wolverine, mm -hmm. I do five squat jumps, really as high as right, you can. Okay. So we're... And by, so you got your breath going, and then you have to run. So you're running. But you're running. You're fighting being light, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna start yelling. Right. No one knows this. But I actually lost my falsetto for about seven or eight years by playing Wolverine. By playing Wolverine. And I thought I would never get it back. Really? But when you train for the stage, it's all that very, and somehow, right. really, like that is Wolverine. Right. But for me, like when I was doing those voiceover sessions, right. I said, let's do one more. I want you to film it. I want to have, right. because I am dripping with sweat every yeah. time I would play it. And I think people assume, ah, oh, you know, it's just the voiceover. I always tell young creators, actors, whatever it may be, that, that they, what they see is the final product, right? The work that goes in yeah. before you hit Madison right. Square Garden, right. right? The tireless, endless work to get to that point of mastery, that's what they don't see. Because you've got to stumble and fall a million times. <laughs> I look back now and think, oh, right, yeah. It doesn't just happen. Absolutely. Right. Find the thing you love to do. Yeah, and then... And then work your ass off. Work your ass off, yeah. Every story ultimately reaches its end. Wolverine's story isn't over, not by a long shot, but Hugh's next adventure will no doubt be an amazing story all on its own. Because sometimes being the best there is at what you do means knowing when to walk away.